The Great Regeneration. It is threefold because it causes changes in the body physically, mentally and energetically. The Great Regeneration starts with thought. The moment you change your perception is the moment you rewrite the chemistry of your body. Imprints of thought vibrations are carried through our bodies by the lymphatic water system and our cells adjust accordingly. Therefore, our lymphatic water systems are key in the great regeneration. In other words, the lymphatic system creates the physical outcomes of our conscious and subconscious thoughts. Again, this is because thoughts, emotions and memories are vibrations that leave imprints in our lymph water. Water is the mirror that has the ability to show us what we cannot see. It is the blueprint for our reality, which can change with a single positive thought. All it takes is faith, if you are open to it. It is a fact that every seed begins its life exclusively in water, including all body stem cells and DNA. Stem cells are the beginning of the physical body and water should be considered as the medium for life. Stem cells are another key to the great regeneration. The potential of stem cells is fascinating. They have the ability to self-renew and become any cell in the body. The sign of the egg represents potentiality. The seed of generation, stem cell, the mystery of life. Introduction Historical literature tells us that the great regeneration begins with the union of the solar and lunar germs in a purified body. The evoking of man's solar energy can cleanse us from all these diseases, for its fire penetrates every element in our body and keeps the blood pure. We are inwardly divided, individuals, in divided jewels. The union of the lunar and solar germs is the overcoming of this inner division or enmity carnal mind versus Christ mind, black kundalini versus white kundalini, autonomic versus voluntary. Therefore I say such a person, once integrated, will become full of light, but such a person, once divided, will be full of darkness. In the average human being, the dual power is not operating in harmony. But once these two currents balance, the regenerated being will manifest, or we could say that Jesus will resurrect. The man who is reborn in us is of water and the spirit, our own regenerate self, the Christ Jesus and Son of Man, the Bible puts it like this, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Okay, that's the historical symbolic synopsis. Now, let's see the modern scientific parallel. The esoteric lunar and solar bodies correspond with the lymphatic water and respiratory breath systems. Water is H2O, two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Spirit is air, approximately 78% nitrogen, 20% oxygen. 
So the solar spirit body is mostly nitrogen and some oxygen. When nitrogen and oxygen combine in the body, nitric oxide forms. Later we'll see the incredible role of nitric oxide in the Great Regeneration. The philosophical elements of water, air, fire and earth are now represented by periodic elements, the building blocks of known life. The water element of the ancient philosophers is the hydrogen of modern science. The air has become oxygen, the fire, nitrogen, the earth, carbon. These key elements make up the mass majority of our wonderfully made human bodies. Masons and other hidden groups have always known the importance of scientific elements and revered them in their art and teachings. For example, the famous Masonic number 153 signifies hydrogen, which is atomic number one and has the atomic radius 53. 666 signifies carbon 12, which has six neutrons, six protons, and six electrons. Carbon is the alchemical coal of the ancient masters and the earth of material form. Carbon dioxide was alchemically known as fixed or stale air, which is interesting when you consider that breath exercises, meditations and yoga all aim to expel excess carbon dioxide, which is a poison in the body. With its seven protons, seven neutrons and seven electrons, 777, nitrogen was of course referred to as fire. A key philosophical secret was that phosphorus is the fifth element and light of the body. Phosphorus is part of the nitrogen family. Alchemically, phosphorus is considered light and nitrogen is considered fire. Here is the most important fact about nitrogen and phosphorus to bear in mind as we continue. All of the mineral cell salts in the body are formed by the precipitation of nitrogen, the fire of life, and phosphorus, the light of life. The mineral body is the alchemist's inner salt body, the solar light or sun body. Our bodies are formed from photon light electromagnetic energy. Photon light combines to form electrons. Electrons create atoms. Atoms create molecules, cell salts. Molecules create cells. Cells create tissues. Tissues create organs. Organs organize into systems. And systems organize to create the body. The Great Regeneration will now be defined in this organ-to-organ -organ overview with some critical pit stops along the way. Light and Electrons Photon light is electromagnetic energy. God is often described as light. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. Therefore, we could say, God is electromagnetism. Light predominantly enters the body via the nose, mouth, eyes and fontanelles. Photon light is an intelligence, an ultimate unit, inseparable and indivisible, God. In the body, photon light is absorbed or transformed into electrons, predominantly in the form of nitrogen and phosphorus, 
transformers of mineral cell salts. The circulation and transformation of electromagnetic energy in biological systems is the foundation of life on Earth. In the invisible, unmanifest realm, the sacred geometry of photons reveals the seed and flower of life. Every element is built up out of one invariable unit, the electron, and we must therefore assert that mind is potential in the unit of matter, the electron itself. An electron is the lightest, stable, subatomic particle known. The fundamental unit of electricity is the negative charge of the electron. The Nobel Prize laureate Svent Gyorgyi famously said, all life depends on a small trickle of electrons from the sun. The sun has been personified many times over the course of history. Some examples, Brahma, Krishna, the ancient Hindus called the sun Chris, Amun, Abram, Adonis Adonai Lord, Mithras, Zeus, Aesus, Jesus. Samuel on War says that the serpentine fire, Kundalini, dwells in electrons, and electrons are the philosophers and alchemists' gold. The word gold comes from the word ore, or ore a product of the sun's rays or breath of life. Electrons are golden. Electrons are a product of the sun's rays, photon light. Electrons are present in air or breath and everywhere else if you think about it. Electrons are the fundamental unit of power or electricity. The receptacle of gold is the pineal gland, receiver and transmitter of golden solar energy. Cells in the pineal gland detect electromagnetic energy and send it throughout the nervous system by phototransduction. Christian Unity teacher Charles Fillmore also highlighted the power of electrons. Through thought energy, or the dynamic power of mind, man can release the life of the electrons secreted in the atoms that compose the cells of his body. You weren't born to die. You were born to harness your full atomic capabilities. This statement really sums up what the great regeneration is all about. The power stored in the millions of cells that compose the human body is infinite and accessing it is the key. Now that we have a good understanding of the light and the way it combines to form electrons and subsequently atoms such as hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen and phosphorus which in turn make molecules or mineral salts we can move on to discover the journey of light through the body.